Yes, everybody, what's going on? My name's Stephen Alson, and this is five things that we learned about the attack this season. Um, we've been doing it for the defence, the midfield, uh, and obviously we're going to be doing it about the attack. We've done it about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Number one, we've got goal scorers. thought the attack individually um, pulled out some fantastic stats last season. Um, some very encouraging stats. I, I remember sitting probably in this exact same spot last year saying... You get rid of Sanchez as much as, you know, I'm not sure it's worked out with him. You get rid of Lukaku, similar sort of vibe. And um, I think you need record-breaking seasons out of Anthony Martial and Marcus Rashford. And we didn't even really consider Greenwood. I honestly thought if Greenwood gets like five or six goals, that was a fantastic achievement for him uh, last season. He ended up with 17. <laughs> Um, so I, I, we we totally almost discounted what Mason Greenwood could probably bring to the table. Uh, he's been phenomenal, obviously. 49 appearances, a lot of them off the bench, but still. We also had Bruno Fernandez chipping in with um, with 12 goals of his own. Um, I, I think we got that record-breaking season uh, from all of them, and I actually think that they can all build on that as we go forward for this season. Um, per 90 in all competitions... Uh, Tony Marshall was um, 0.58 goal per 90, Rashford was 0.57, and Greenwood was 0.59. That's uh, unbelievable from all of them. And that's 155 minutes per goal for Marshall, 158 minutes per goal for Rashford, and 152 minutes per goal for Mason Greenwood. Um, the most deadly out of them all, 28% goal conversion with Tony Marshall, 20% with Marcus Rashford and 26% from Mason Greenwood. Um, each player scored in every other game, um, every other 90 minutes essentially that they played in, meaning that on average you were guaranteed to see a goal a game from one of those front three, which is absolutely phenomenal, isn't it? We have got goal scorers in this team. We have definitely got goal scorers. Number two. Marcus cemented his new role. Last season, we saw Marcus Rashford majorly played off the left, and uh, he also had a brief spell as the lone striker while Tony Marshall was injured. 35 appearances um, and 18 goals, 11 assists from the left wing. Nine appearances as a striker with four goals and one assist. Still not bad. In the Premier League, it was 3.1 shots per game, 1.1 key passes per game, 1.9 dribbles, 77.3% pass accuracy, and according to who scored, a rating of 7.3 across the season. Marcus has now played left wing 107 times in his career and has recently cemented this position as his own in the squad. I think he performs brilliantly out there. I think, as we learned, he was playing with a little bit of an injury. You could see him occupy more of a withdrawn, involved in a build-up kind of role. I would like to see him return back to the Marcus Rashford that stands people up and goes past them. That's the Marcus Rashford that I like to see. Um, and as we saw when Tony Marshall was injured, Rashford could do a little bit down the middle. But I do think that his abilities and his creativities come out on the left-hand side and hitting double figures uh, in assists, getting over 20 goals, absolutely phenomenal performance from Marcus Rashford and considering how much of it he's been played injured, I thought it was a very, very big season from him and if you cast your mind back to the start of the season, you're all them fucking disrespectful muppets calling him fucking Trashford, saying he needs a loan and Rashbeck and all that lot. All this kid needed was a little bit of patience and a manager that believed in him. And look what he's gone on and done. And he's done this with being injured for significant parts of the season. We've seen him being isolated and the only decent forward. Like We've seen him play alone without Tony Marshall. You know He's had a great, great season. And hopefully, as we go into next season, he's got better support around him. He's got better support behind him. And he can go and build on what's been his best season to date. Number three, we need more additions. On the note of Rashford covering for Martial when he was injured, roles reversed when Rashford got injured, uh, and that is the issue that we really learned last season. The attacking department is extremely thin. Rashford, Martial, Greenwood, Igalo, Dan James, it is absolutely crying out for new additions and first-choice new additions as well. It's very obvious we want a right winger. It's very obvious we want that right winger to be Jadon Sancho. And we could very much do with probably another forward. Odin Agallo's probably only, only going to be here till January. And even though we saw people kicking off at the suggestion that we might even bring in someone like Joshua King, I think that would be quite an astute signing. I think that's the sort of backup, happy to be here, different to what we've 
you've got sort of forward that United could do with. The sort of Mandzukic role that you saw him fulfilling at Juventus. Someone that knows their place, knows when they're needed, knows when they're not, and can be relied upon as and when that time comes. Solskjaer himself was pretty good at that role himself. Because we get so many injuries, because we've got this niggling long-term injury going on with Marcus last season it looks like it might carry into this season we had the little one that Tony Marshall got the front three as a first choice is not going to be there for 40 games you basically need four maybe five players to start those three starting spots I'd love to see United really push the boat out and get someone like a Moussa Dembele but it ain't gonna happen they're not going to bring in someone of that calibre, well, there's still areas like arguably left-back, centre-half, maybe even another midfielder to bring in. But we definitely need some sort of reinforcements. Would Jadon Sancho, on his own, be enough? Number four, Mason Greenwood is a generational talent. Uh, end of discussion. Do we really need to de delve into why he is? All right, okay, we will do. So, um, 17 goals and three assists, 20 goal involvements in your breakout season. Getting your debut in the last game of the season last year doesn't really count. This is his debut season. 18 years of age, playing in the Premier League. Uh, Ansu Fati, the guy that everyone's going bananas about. Uh, Barcelona's wonder kid, eight goals, one assist. Fucking rookie numbers. Um, Martinelli. The other one at Arsenal, gas up. 10 goals, 4 assists. Only 3 of those came in the league compared to Mason Greenwood's 10 in the league. Also 19 years of age. Also was on trial at United. And we looked at him and was like, actually, we'll, we'll keep hold of Mason Greenwood, thanks. Next season, Mason Greenwood has got better odds than Lacazette for being the outright top scorer in the Premier League. The reason for that is because Mason Greenwood is an unbelievable striker. He's not going to feature on the right wing forever. He's going to grow into a Robin Van Persie style number nine with arguably a little bit more athleticism than what Robin Van Persie had. Um, I think he's probably going to put on a little bit more size. And once he does, he's going to be an absolute nightmare for defences to deal with. And finally, young attack, time to develop. The age of our front three this season, uh, on average, was 21 years and four months. That's Marcus Rashford at 22, Tony Marshall at 24, and Mason Greenwood at 18. As much as people don't like to think this, Rashford is still a relatively young player. And as we mentioned earlier, he's played 107 times on the left wing. That is just about completing your apprenticeship. For me, 100 appearances is your apprenticeship. Now, he has completed more than 100 appearances, but not all in the same position. Not all have been 90 minutes, as you know, with, with uh, Jose Mourinho. So much of it was... Marshall starts, Rashford comes off the bench or vice versa. I think he's just about completed his apprenticeship on the left wing. And that's why you're starting to see the results that you're seeing out of the guy now. Um, when people talk about prime years, they're, they're looking at 25, 26, 27, 28 years old, which is you know, four, five, six years away for a lot of these players. Um, he's already played 38 times for England. He's got 142 appearances in the league. Your Marcus Rashford is now becoming an established player, but he's still extremely young and has still got more growing, more developing, and more quality and consistency to bring to his game. Mason Greenwood, obviously, he's just had his proper first debut season in men's football. Ten goals in the Premier League. Go and have a look at Alan Shearer's first couple of seasons. There was one season where I think he scored once. 34 appearances, um, obviously not all starts and certainly not all nine minutes. Five goals in the Europa League in nine appearances and even managed to get his first international cap on international break. Don't know what happened after that. I'm sure it was all fine. Um, he's potentially got almost no ceiling. He literally could be one of the best players the world's seen. He's got it all. He's got athleticism. He's got height. He's got a build. He's got left foot. He's got right foot. One of the most underrated things about Mason Greenwood is his vision. In the academy, he had just over a goal a game, but he had just under uh, half an assist per game as well, which means that he's not just entirely about himself and he has got the ability to put somebody else into a good position. I think he'll be a phenomenal number nine. Once he gets to 23, 24 years of age and he's really grown into his frame, Mason Greenwood will be one of the top strikers in world football. Mark my words. It's, it's a certainty. There's only injuries or attitude can stop that now. And I think his attitude, at least on the pitch, is perfect.
And, and actually, that sounds like I'm accusing him of anything off the pitch. I'm not, actually. No, his attitude's fucking top. He's a winner. Tony Marshall, obviously, you don't really need to say so much about him. With the ball at his feet, he's almost unplayable. Uh, banged in goals, as we've already spoken about, and I think you can expect him to continue that form and possibly even develop that next year. And with such a young front three, what I think the fans need to understand is that they're still learning, they're still mastering their trade, and they're still working out how to play with each other. It's not like they all came through. That You've got two academy players, but they didn't play together. You know... <laughs> Mason Greenwood was 13-14 when Marcus was making his debut. They haven't played together. They're still learning how to understand each other, still learning you know, the, the, the right times to gamble, the right times to maybe take it easy. That will come. But while they're doing that, they're absolutely ripping it up. They're putting in incredible numbers. So just imagine what it'll be like with another season behind them, with better midfield support and more freedom because we're actually dominating possession better in games. Especially next season for Greenwood, now that he's had a full season in men's football, I think he's going to be absolutely raring to go and ready to prove some of the shit that he's been getting uh, from the newspapers of late. Let, let them know what he's all about. I think it's a very exciting season next season, and I think, if anything, the attack was one of the biggest bright spots in what was a pretty ordinary season last year. wonder what they can do next year. Let me know in the comments who's going to be top scorer, what sort of tally you expect each player to end the season with, um, and will we add Jaden Sancho to what's an already quite potent attack? Let me know in the comments. I was going to say subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Laters.